If you have ever wandered blindly through the streets of the open museum we call Rome, you'll know that you are bound to stumble across something surprising and exciting. Like this perfect medley of a Baroque stone elephant surmounted by an ancient Egyptian pagan obelisk located in a square in front of a medieval Dominican church with a Renaissance facade. I mean, why not? Let's take a closer look at Bernini's elephant. This marble elephant was designed by Gian Lorenzo Bernini and executed by his assistant Ercole Ferrata in 1667. It stands in Piazza della Minerva in front of the Gothic church of Santa Maria Sopra Minerva. Now you may be wondering why an elephant in the center of Rome and what inspired this wonderful sculpture's creation? Well, let's start at the very beginning. In 1665, while digging the foundations of a wall in the garden of the monastery next to the church, Dominicans uncovered an obelisk inscribed with Egyptian hieroglyphs. Measuring around 5.5 meters in height, this is Rome's smallest obelisk. It was most likely brought to Rome in the first half of the first century AD by the Emperor Diocletian to adorn an Isaeum, a temple originally located underneath the church. You see, the church stands upon what used to be an ancient temple dedicated to the Egyptian goddess Isis, which was later rededicated to the goddess Minerva, hence its current name, Santa Maria Sopra Minerva. Upon the discovery of the obelisk, Pope Alexander VII, born as Fabio Chigi, commissioned this project with the aim of finding a worthy setting and placement for the obelisk. Many artists were asked to submit designs. A Dominican priest named Father Domenico Paglia, who was resident in the monastery to the left of the church, was the first to do so. But unfortunately, both his designs were rejected on account of not evoking holy wisdom. You see, the Pope wanted the statue to evoke the virtue of divine wisdom, which was common to the Egyptian gods of the Isaeum, thus referencing the original dedication of the site. Bernini was then requested to submit some drawings, and the Pope swiftly chose his design featuring an elephant. Now, this may seem a strange choice of animal, especially considering that during Bernini's time, elephants were not common at all in the city of Rome. In 1630, an elephant visited Rome for the first time in over 100 years, and Bernini was very likely one of those who saw it in person, especially considering his realistic rendering of the animal. So why did the Pope like the idea? Well, due to their solid bodies and sturdy limbs, elephants have long thought to encapsulate fortitude, knowledge and wisdom. What better way to complement the obelisk, which in itself was thought to represent divine knowledge, than to show it balancing atop a sturdy representation of wisdom. The Latin inscription on the pedestal reinforces this idea. It says, let any beholder of the carved images of the wisdom of Egypt on the obelisk carried by the elephant, the strongest of beasts, realize that it takes a robust mind to carry solid wisdom. The addition of the Pope's heraldic insignia at the top of the obelisk confirmed that he is claiming the obelisk and its association of divine wisdom as his own. So in its entirety, the monument shows the virtue of divine wisdom as symbolized by the pagan obelisk and its associations, resting and balancing atop the shoulders of the noble elephant, who in turn acts as a very appropriate heraldic encapsulation of the erudite and virtuous Pope himself. Elephants have always thought to be noble, strong and sturdy animals who possess an incredible natural intelligence. But here, Bernini has arguably exaggerated some of the elephant's features in order to accentuate his wisdom. Bernini has rendered the elephant with large, upturned pupils and a noticeably big forehead. In other words, symbols of wisdom. The elephant also has scallop-shaped ears that resemble conch shells, aka symbols of sanctity. The elephant's large eyes have also humanized the animal. The strategic exaggeration of these anatomical features perhaps helps to create a human expression of intelligence that we can better recognize. Some scholars even argue that Bernini gave the elephant the typological features of the Pope, Bernini's design was very likely inspired and based upon a 15th century novel by Francesco Colonna, which was very popular at the time. Even Pope Alexander VII had a copy. In the novel, the main character, Polyphil, comes across a stone elephant surmounted by an ancient obelisk. Sound familiar? Originally, Bernini's design features the obelisk resting atop the elephant without a structural base under its body, thus surpassing the design found in the Roman novel. However, Father Paglia, bitter and resentful after being rejected, insisted that, in line with traditional canons, one should never have a heavy weight resting atop a hollow space, as this would be unstable. He demanded that there be a cube inserted below the elephant's body, in line with Colonna's novel, in order to support the weight of the obelisk, which the Pope unfortunately agreed to. Rather annoyed, Bernini attempted to cover up the cube with the addition of a marble saddlecloth, but this did not stop his elephant from looking rather podgy. And so because of its podgy nature, the people of Rome began to refer to this sculpture as 
il porcino della Minerva, Minerva's piggy, which over time mistakenly morphed into il pulcino della Minerva, Minerva's chick. Unfortunately, the Pope died in May of 1667 before this sculpture was finished, so he never saw it in its finished state. Now, a well-known anecdote states that Bernini placed the elephant with its rear end facing the Dominican monastery and with its tail snaking to the left, thus exposing its clenched and tensed behind and consequently forming a highly indecent greeting that would confront the Dominicans each time they looked out onto the piazza. The elephant also looks like he is smiling from certain angles while enacting this permanently impolite salute the ultimate form of revenge. Thank you so much for watching today's video on Bernini's elephant. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel to help my content rise to the very top. If you have any particular requests that you'd like me to cover, I can't wait to hear about them in the comment section down below. Otherwise, thanks once again, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>